Keep out of this car, right? We don't need you. Stop her, somebody. Don't let her see this. as her father and her brother were. Shock. I believe I could have made that diagnosis. Now, don't take your moral indignity out on me, Ben. I don't mean to, Paul. Just when I think of people like that Mrs. Buford, one of the so-called leaders of our town. Give her and... these. One every four hours. The only thing else I can prescribe for her is time. How about prescribing a little kindness and affection? About the kindest thing that could happen to Lita Malvet is for her to get out of Virginia City as soon as possible. Give the people a chance to forget about the two men her father and brother murdered. But when she leaves, she ought to go of her own free will, not because somebody threw rocks at her and drove her out. You may be right, Ben. Goodbye. Trying to scare this horse half to death. Can I get him tamed down? Yeah, cut out the infernal shooting. Well, I was just practicing, older brother. Well, then put it back in your holster before I have to take it away from you and keep it until you grow up. Well, you think you can? Now, what's all this racket? Little Jones, next time you pull a stunt like that, I'm going to put you up on that little sorrel. Your baby son here is playing at stage robber. Well, quiet down the lot of you. That girl in there needs a rest. Oh, look, Pop, we're gonna start guarding those mine payroll shipments. We And keep quiet about that, too. Well, who's gonna hear me out here? Now, never mind who's go... I can't say you're welcome on the Ponderosa, Renton. I figured I wouldn't be. And why are you here? Ask about Lita, that's all. I'll tell her you asked about her. I'd sure like to see you, Mr. Cartwright. I don't think that would be best. I appreciate what you've done for her, Mr. Cartwright. I, I just stopped by to say thanks and see how she was, that's all. Paul, I can't do no harm. It might do some good. Come on, then. Take his horse. I needed you. I tried to find you. I come as soon as I could get here, Lita. I've been working at a ranch over at Washoe. Oh. 
What am I going to do, Clay? I want to I want to go away from Virginia City. Running away not going to help anything. I found that out. But, but the talk, Clay, facing them every day. As long as you know the talk is lies, it can't hurt you, Lita. First thing you got to do is forget the talk. Ain't that right, Mr. Cartwright? Well, the, uh, the doctor did say she needed a lot of rest. Sure. I'll be around any time you need me, Lita. You know that. Now, you get a lot of rest, just like the doctor said. Joe. You and me used to have a lot of good times together, huh? Yeah, we did. Thanks. Thanks, all of you. Well, that's all we need. Somebody like Clay Renton snooping around. I don't think he's snooping around at him. I think he meant what he said. You know, he's just a little bit older than I am, and he's already got two prison terms behind him. Yes, and about eight or ten more ahead of him, more than likely. Paul, don't you think maybe you ought to talk to her about him? Now, son, there's one thing that a man can't do, and that's tell a woman who to love and who not to love. Yeah, I reckon not. You boys have nothing to do? Yeah, come on, little Joe. Well, what's in your mind? The girl? She's been here three days now. What are you going to do about her? Well, what do you want me to do, throw her out while that mob in Virginia City is still in a lynching mood? We have an obligation to ourselves, too. Such as? Guarding the payroll shipments. Look, whether we like it or not, the only associates leaders ever had in our life have been outlaws. And I just don't like the idea of somebody like Clay Renton hanging around the Ponderosa. I suppose you're right. Why don't you do something for a change and rustle me up something to eat, huh? Who took care of you before I was around? Where do you think you've been? If I thought it was any of your business, I'd tell you. I warned you for the last time, Clay. I'm running this shebang, all the way. Yeah, you're running it just fine. You have us hold up an empty stage, Malvet and his boy kill a guard in a drive and get hung for it. What'd we get out of that job, Spence? It's been a long time since we picked up any money, boss. We came here to get a slice of that mine payroll money. I don't care if it takes six months. We ain't gonna go off half-cocked and get our necks stretched like Malvet and the boy did. They ain't carrying that payroll on the stages anymore, but they're still getting it through. You've got no idea how they're doing it, huh? I suppose you have. If I was running this outfit, I'd find out. Well, you ain't running it. I kind of go along with your thinking, kid. But you ought to have better sense than try to outdraw Spence. Thanks for taking care of my chickens, Hoss. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. I, I plumb enjoyed it. Me and them chickens got to calling each other by first name. Oh, I almost forgot. I, I sold some of your eggs to Mr. Buford, and here's the money. Ain't no cause for that. Nobody's ever been as good to me as you folks have. Well, we, uh, we'd better get this little lady home. Bye, Miss Lee. Home. Oh, I don't mean I don't appreciate all of it. Oh, I understand, Lita. I'll go in with you, see that everything oh, is all right. Oh, no, I, I mean, I left it so quick and all. I guess it looks pretty awful, don't it? Lita, 
You do believe that I want to help you every way I can, don't you? You and the boys think maybe I ought to go away from here, don't you? I think it would be best. Mr. Cartwright, I haven't got any place to go. Do you have any plans, then? Well, I've got my chickens. Mr. Buford buys all my eggs. I can make a living. I've been doing it for three years now. And I never took a penny of the money my dad and brother stole. You've got to believe that, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I, I do believe you, Lita, but, you know, there are some folks that won't. And I'll, I'll make them believe it. I'll stand up and face them and, and make them know it's true. Well, if that's what you think is best for you to do, Lita, I'll do everything I can to help you. It's what I have to do, Mr. Cartwright. Clay was right. And in a way, it won't do any good. Welcome home, Lita. Clay, what are you doing here? Who's got a better right? What's the matter? A week with those high and mighty cut rights make you too good for me? It's not that, Clay. What is it? It's just that... that you take me for granted. Take you for granted? You think I've thought of anything but you every day of those three years I was in jail? I'm sorry, Clay. Let, let's not talk about it, no? Let's just remember that it's over now and... and we can get a fresh start on things. You bet we will. And we'll have lots of good times together, too. It's, it's more than that, Clay. It's... it's... Having people look up to you, and it's walking down the street knowing that nobody's talking about you behind your back. Wait a minute. What do those Cartwrights do to you, anyway? They treated me like a lady. <laughs> well, honey, ain't you one? Come here. It's been a long time, Lita. Don't let those Cartwrights give you any fancy ideas. They ain't like us. They treated me good. But I'm your kind. And don't you ever forget it. $25 for all the decorations. You always were a sharp trader, Harvey. <laughs> we buy eggs from her. Fresh eggs are hard to come by. You get them where you can. Well, I guess everything's in order then, Harvey. Be the best bazaar we ever had, no doubt about it. My wife has worked day and night. See you later. Bye, my boy. So you brought me some more eggs. There are six dozen there. You can count them. Well, now I, I could take your word for it. I wouldn't have to count them. They'd look awful pretty on you, Lita. I've never seen any of that pretty before. You're just your size, too. If you'll finish counting them, I'll take my pay for the eggs now. You ought to have these shoes, Lita. I can't afford them. If you'll give me the pay, Mr. Buford. You can afford them, Lita. You got a pair of shoes, Lita? I told you I couldn't afford them. 
I just want to be nice and friendly. I could come out to your cabin of an evening once in a while and, and pick up the eggs. She came at me like a tiger. I caught her trying to steal. These! Dirty liar. Stop it! Honey, they tried to rob me. I saw it all. She's a thief, just like the rest of her family. Take you, me home, Clay. Please take me home. Come on. We just gonna let them go? You got your shoes back, didn't you? Honey, it's like I told you. She tried to rob me. I said I saw it all, didn't I? Anybody interested in a $50,000 load of firewood? I'd be interested in your keeping quiet about it. Any trouble? Not a bit. No. Yeah, there's apt to be. If those outlaws are still around, they find out how we get on the payroll across the Ponderosa. Now we've got to figure out something different for next week. Listen, Adam, little Joe had a real good idea. Here's what we're going to do. He's going to put on a beard, see? And then we're going to get in the covered wagon and come out here like we're looking for land. Yeah, see, then we, then we put him in a, in a real nice bonnet and a, and a print dress. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did I ever get tangled up with you two? <laughs> You're just plain lucky, older brother. Well, here it is. $50,000 in cold minute cash. Well, what I could do with that at the big charity bazaar next week. Well, no, I wouldn't worry about it too much, because you're not going to be at the charity bazaar. Yeah, why not? You'll be right here on one of these payroll wagons. You get in trouble there, it'll be constructive trouble. You get in trouble in town, it'll be just plain trouble. Hey, Pa, Adam says I can't go to the bazaar. That's right, son. But neither can Adam. He's going to be riding the wagon right alongside you. Oh, now, Pa. Hoss and I will represent the Cartwright family at the bazaar. I'm trustworthy. All right, come on, let's unload the wagon. Why don't you listen to me? Because I don't like it. It wouldn't hurt to listen, Spence. Can't be no worse off than we are now. All right, so you found out how it's done. What are you going to do about it? What's the matter, Spence? You gone yellow? I've gone smart. I've got to wait for the right time. These nags of ours ain't had a beta of oats in a month. What are you going to do? Get these horses of ours ready by next Wednesday? I'm going to buy fresh horses. With what? Money. Money out of the safe in Harvey Buford's store. <laughs> With half of Virginia City looking over your shoulder. It won't be. I take time to think things out. Now listen, there's a bazaar starting up in a couple of days. Everything shuts down except the saloons. Nah, it'd be good to have some money to go on, Spence. No! Why? Because you didn't think of it? Because I don't want no part of a cheap two-bit holdup. I came here after big money, and that's what I'm going to get. I told you before, boy, you think too small. You've been living on egg money too long. We're going to do things my way this time, Spence. What's the little boy trying to do? <laughs> Grow up to man size? He ain't trying. He just did. I guess I just don't know how to say this right, Lita. But 
right there in Buford's store when he accused you, I knew it then. If I can't stand to see you face it alone anymore, I can't stand to be alone. I love you, Lita. I love you and I need you. Oh, Clay. Oh, I waited so long to hear somebody say that. I know folks around here are going to talk against me, but... But if I... I knew you was waiting, I... Oh, I will, Clay. I promise you I will. I go away for a while and get a little money ahead. Oh, it isn't important, Clay. Yes, it is, honey. It's important to a man. A man likes to feel like he's taking care of his wife. I'll get it. Of course you will. I hope you won't change your mind, Lita. Like if those Cartwrights start talking against me. They don't like me coming out here to see you. But I do, Clay. That's all that matters. Miss Leland, I just brought that chicken feed into town for you. Show big things doing in Virginia City today. They get ready for that bazaar meeting. Got the streets all decorated and the booze all set up. <laughs> Say, Miss Leland, you you sure do look pretty, ma'am. Oh, you like it? I made it myself. Sure enough? Oh, it's, it's mighty pretty, ma'am. It's the first time I ever tried. <laughs> really? Listen, you keep that up, and you'll be able to take first place at that dressmaking contest at the bazaar one of these days. Oh, Hoss, do you think so? Do you really think so? Well, ma'am, like you said, it is your first one, and, and I reckon I reckon it takes, a, it takes a lot of practice to really so good. Hoss, when I was sick, when I was over at your house, you said that I could talk to you any time, tell you anything I wanted to. Yes, ma'am, and I meant it, too. Well, I want to show you something. I have to tell you. It's in here. Sit down, Hoss. Yes, sir. Now close your eyes. Yes, sir. It's a wedding dress, ain't it, Miss Lita? Yes, it's a wedding dress. I made it all myself. It's my wedding dress. Y you made it for your hope chest. I heard about gals making making stuff for their hope chest. It sure is pretty, Miss Lita. I'm going to enter it in the contest, Hoss, and I'm going to be married in it, in the best church in Virginia City. And I'm going to walk down the main street of that town and let everybody look at me, and I'll be so proud, and everybody will say, there goes Mrs. Clay Retton. Huh? You and Clay Renton? He asked me, Hoss. I wasn't supposed to say nothing, but I'd been just bursting inside with wanting to tell somebody about it. Uh, Clay's gonna get a job, a real fine job. Yes, sir. Uh, it ain't like I hadn't known him for a long time. No, no. I know he's had trouble, but then so have I. I want to start all over again, and so does Clay. Don't you see? That's what makes it so good, Hoss. Yes, I reckon I do. Ain't you gonna wish me happiness, Hoss? Yes, Miss Lita. I, I wish you all the happiness in the world. You and Clay both. Bye, Miss Lita.
Mrs. Buford. Looks like your yes. bazaar is going to be a great success. Well, I've worked very hard at it. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Nice to see you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you for your generous contribution. Oh, not at all, not at all. Good cause. <laughs> oh, and uh, Mr. Cartwright, I was wondering if you would... Uh, if I would judge the dressmaking contest again this year? No, Mr. Buford, never, never again. You ladies take this way too serious for me. But thank you very much for asking. Much obliged. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, ma'am. Goodbye. Look, let's get over to the last dollar, see what the boys are up to, eh? Paul, oh, don't you think it's a little bit early to start celebrating? Early? What, for a couple of young bucks like us? <laughs> $50. A lousy $50. There should be more. I thought there'd be more. You thought. We risk getting our neck stretched for $50. Take it easy. I'll figure out something. Harvey? Harvey? Don't tell me you're going to open up today. Oh, I have to get something for my wife. Boyd, it's been sort of up to you and me to head up things around here. Something wrong, Harvey? Well, what do you think we ought to do, Harvey? I don't know. My wife thinks she ought to be run out of town. Me and the rest of the committee will back you up. You know that, Harvey. Spence was right about you. You do think small. Harry, let's get out of here. Come pick this up for my wife. I didn't figure on you being here today. Turn around. Huh? Turn around and walk. Making contest. Now, now, ladies, if you can get your men folks quieted down. Now, ladies. Mrs. Buford. Now, ladies, as you know. I got an entry. <laughs> what is it, child? I made a dress. I went to enter it. I was afraid I'd be late. Clay was supposed to come by and get me, but he plumb forgot. I guess that's just like a man, though. It's kind of crumpled, but I stuck by all the rules, Miss Buford. Uh, I bought the material right here in town, like the rules say. I traded eggs for it. You can ask your husband, Mrs. Buford. And, and it ain't no boughten pattern, either. I made it my own self. It's my wedding dress, Mrs. Buford. I guess that was just an accident, Mrs. Buford. I guess you just couldn't help it. I said, I want to enter my wedding dress in the contest. The entries are closed. 
to everybody, Mrs. Buford, or just to me? If you had been on time, I would have been glad to accept your entry. You're a liar, Mrs. Buford, and everybody here knows it. I know I ought to hate you, but I don't. I just feel sorry for you. Yeah, it's really nice. I wish the boys could be here with us. Yeah, did you see the expression on old Adam's face when you told him he couldn't come? <laughs> What happened? I just found out where I belonged, that's all. Now, now, wait a minute, Lita. For what? sawmill, spread them out, and cut up all the trails between here and the Ponderosa. I'll get some men together here to follow out the Gold Hill and the Peabine Springs roads. I'll meet you at the Ponderosa later. Yes, sir. You've all got good ropes, Ben. We know how to use them. Yes, I guess you would, Boyd. You've had practice. Things in town. Ugly. Boss said you sent the uh, posse up toward Peabine. A lynch mob would be more like it. Well, I doubt if they'll find anything they can lynch out that way. You picked up a trail then. I figured you would. Yeah, there must have been three others besides Clay Renton. What makes you so sure it was Clay Renton? Well, the horse said that. That Harvey Buford had mentioned Clay's name. I'm not going to condemn a man until I have a lot more to go on than that. You ever talk to Lita? Not yet. We found where four men had been camped. It looked like they'd been there for some time. Followed a trail up along Manzanita Ridge, and we ran out of daylight. Headed up to the lake then, huh? Well, three of them are, anyway. You boys follow on along the ridge, then circle back to the Malbec place. Sure you want to go along? I'm sure. I guess we lost them. I doubt it. I wouldn't do that, boys. Just leave them pea shooters right where they are and be sensible about this. It was Clay Renner that beat up that storekeeper. I swear it was. Now, the safe was robbed. You got the money with you? You know what was in that safe? Fifty dollars. That's what was in it. Cartwright, listen to me. Let, let me explain it. Oh, you'll me. have all kinds of time to explain. What do you want to do with them, Adam? I'll take them back to town where there's a jail to hold them. And we'll swing back around Lita's place like Pa told us. Fifty dollars. Was it worth it, boys? Riding in here just now like something had happened. I used to see my own father and brother ride in here like that. I felt bad about not being here to take you to the bazaar like I promised. I just wanted to see and explain. Maybe I rode a little too hard. Clay, I heard about it. Everybody did. About what? Harvey Buford. Who 
Who is it? It's me, Ben Cartwright. You won't need that. Uh, who's with you, Mr. Cartwright? I'm alone. I, uh, I came here because I'd like to talk to you, uh, Lita, about Clay. You've already made up your mind about him, haven't you? No, I haven't made up my mind about yes, anything. you have. All of you have. Somebody gives Harvey Buford the beating he's always deserved, and, and everybody blames Clay. Clay wasn't even in town. Well, if Clay wasn't in town, he can prove that, then there's nothing to worry about. But he'll have to prove it, won't he? Well, shouldn't he? Why should he? Why should he get down on his hands and knees and come crawling to you? Is it because his name is Renton and not Cartwright? Now, you know that isn't so. Why is everybody getting so excited? Every day a man gets a beating in Virginia City and nobody turns a head. Lita, this is more than a beating. Harvey Buford's store was robbed. Harvey Buford is dead. And you understand what I said? A man has been killed. My father and my brother were killed, too. And I know who did it. A whole town full of your kind of people is guilty of that crime. Why don't you go knock on their doors in the middle of the night? Clay Renton is suspected of murder. Clay is not guilty. If you're so sure of that, then what are we fighting about? He's all alone against all the rest of you, and I know how that feels. I know you do. And I want to help you. I can't turn against him, Mr. Cartwright, not when he needs me most. I'm not asking you to turn against him. I'm asking you not to turn against yourself. What is it you want of me? If Clay comes here, don't get into trouble by trying to protect him. and asks me, I'll have to give him my help. Then you'd be putting yourself on the opposite side of the fence from everybody. Well, I guess I would. But to be on the side where I belong. I'm a Malvet, and there's one thing the Malvet women could always be proud of. They always stood up for the men they loved. Thank you for helping me find my own place, Mr. Cartwright. All right, you can come out now, Clay. He's gone. Yeah, I guess he has. Did you think I'd lie to you? No, I could trust you, Lita. I was proud of the way you talked up to him. We gotta get out of here. You got a gunny sack or something? We'll need a few supplies. Start filling up. I'll keep an eye on the window. I didn't know Harvey Buford was dead. He got what he deserved. I think of him putting his hands on you. 
Mr. Cartwright said the store was robbed. I heard him say that. Did you hear him say it, or did you already know it? How could I know it? I told you I wasn't in town, didn't I? Throw some grub in that sack. We got a long, hard ride ahead of us. What are we running from, Clay? That's a fine question coming from you. You heard old man Cartwright, didn't you? He's already made up his mind I'm guilty. But if you're not... Well, what difference does that make in this town? You think they'd listen to me or you? Honey. Look. Don't you know how I've dreamed about this, you and me, getting a fresh start? We can't do it here. They won't give us a chance. Hurry up now. the other three, took him back to town. There's no doubt about Clay's being guilty, Pa. Oh, I guess I knew it all along. So does the rest of the town now. Does anybody know where you were headed? That well, wouldn't be very hard to figure out, would it? We've got to get Clay out of there before that mob gets here. We'll have another lynching in our hands. A horse and little Joe around back. We could rush him. No, we can't. The leader's in there with him. Clay, I have to know the truth. Did you rob Buford's store? Why don't you stop deviling me about it? You didn't answer me. You've got to tell me the truth. Did you rob Buford's store? Did you steal that pair of shoes? Let's move it a little closer. Boys and I are out here alone. Now, if you come out, I promise you we'll see you get a fair deal. Hey, no! You think you can trust those car rights? We've got to trust somebody. Can't you see that? You think they're out there alone? Listen. We'll get out of here, honey. Just do what I say. Out the back way. We'll both start shooting at the same time. Then what, Clay? Leave that to me. We're gonna have a good life together. We're gonna enjoy some of the good things other people have. Everything we've always wanted. Let's go. Everything, Clay? You don't have to wear homemade dresses, either. Not with me, you won't. I'm going to buy you the finest wedding dress you ever had. You did kill Harvey Buford, didn't you? Come on, Lita, let's go. I'm not going, Clay. What? You couldn't turn on me, Lita. Now put away that gun. Honey, what are you trying to do? Put that gun away, Clay. Mr. Cartwright? I hear you, Lita. I want to do what is right, Mr. Cartwright. There'll be no deals with that woman, Cartwright. What do you want to do, Lita? If I bring Clay out without his gun, will you promise me that he won't be lynched? I promise, Lita. How do you expect to keep that promise, Cartwright? 
You'll have to shoot me in the back to make me break it. Ooh, that was smart of you, leader. Old man Cartwright went for it. They wouldn't dare shoot as long as you're with me. I'll put the gun in my boot, huh? We're gonna make a great team, honey, you and me. We're gonna have a good life together. They're not gonna be able to stop us, none of them. We wait and see. As soon as I get clear of the cabin, I'll make a break for a horse, okay? Let's go. Leader kept her end of the bargain. I'll use my gun if I have to. Look in his boot. I would have got one of those payrolls away from you, Cartwright. I had it all figured out. That's what I was after. Just one big one. Just one big one. Clay. You had a chance at something much bigger than a payroll. girl, if there's anything we can do. Is there anything you want to do? I would like her to know how sorry I am. How very, very sorry. Then why don't you tell her that, Mrs. Buford? 